In this video, I'm going to give you the 13 longevity secrets of the oldest people on the planet. Hello and welcome to Total Health with Dr. Nick, where my purpose is to inspire, empower, and motivate you to live longer, healthier, and more abundant lives. And I appreciate you being here with me today. Today's a great video. This is a video I've been wanting to do for a long time, and that is the longevity secrets of the oldest, longest living people on planet Earth. And I'll tell you, if you like what we're talking about today, please make sure you like, share, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you click that little bell notification so you get notified anytime I do a video. And also, too, if you're looking for more information about the ketogenic diet and really don't know where to begin, well, let me take all the guesswork out. Check out my keto course. I have the link down below. And also, too, I've got my cookbook. And if you're looking to get some additional coaching with me personally, then I also have a link for that, too. So, guys, let's go ahead and get started with this because this is really, really important because, you know what? Everybody wants to live longer. Everybody wants to live longer, healthier, as I say, and more abundant lives. But people want to live quality lives, all right? Nobody wants to live long if you're not going to be able to function, if you're going to be sitting around just basically, you know, staring off into space. You want to make sure that you are living the long, healthy lives that God designed you to be. So that's really what this is about today. And how do the longest living people on the planet do that? So let's go ahead and jump right in. Well, this is really all about the blue zones. Now, this is part one of a two-part series. The blue zones we're going to talk about first, and many of you have never heard of the blue zones. And then on the next video, so you want to make sure you watch that, we're going to talk about the other secrets of other different populations in the world and what are they doing to live longer, healthier lives. Well, the blue zones are five unique areas of the world. So the five areas are Loma Linda, California. It is Nicoya, Costa Rica. Sardinia, Italy, my family, uh, not from Sardinia, but from Italy, uh, Ancaria, Greece, and also to Okinawa, Japan. Everybody knows about Okinawa, Japan. They're world-renowned for their longevity, centenarians, people living well over 100 years old, but maybe some of the lesser-known ones are the other parts of the world. So we're going to be getting into that today. And the Blue Zones, the people here are regions where they live significantly longer, healthier lives than the rest of the population or the rest of the planet for that matter. So let's go ahead and dive in. Secret number one is to avoid overeating. People in these regions of the world don't count calories. Now I know for many of you who are following me, my, my keto followers, you're thinking, but no, I've got to count my macros. I've got to make sure I'm eating the right amount of protein and fats and carbs and so on. I will tell you in all honesty, these people do not worry about that, do not think about their calories. They don't think about how many carbs or how many grams of protein they're getting a day. They just eat sensibly. They eat healthy. They eat the way God created for us to eat. And that's one of the things I always endorse. Studies of human populations renowned for longevity also observe links between low calorie intake and extended lifespan and lower likelihood of disease. So guys, very, very important that we eat low calorie dense foods. Now, at the very bottom here, it says processed foods are more calorie dense than anything else. That's right. I don't mean things with just a barcode on it. I'm talking about things with a label on it where it has an ingredient list. Where you have foods with ingredient lists, you typically have higher calorie dense foods. So the, no, the more you eat of that, the less full you're going to get, but yet you're going to get the more calories and the empty calories. Well, people in these blue zones that I was talking about, they don't worry about the calories. They just eat whatever they want because they're eating all the whole foods. They're eating the broccoli, the asparagus, they're eating the fish, they're eating nuts, they're eating seeds and berries and things like that. They're eating as many things as they can based on the way God created it rather than what we typically see in the grocery stores. That's why I always recommend to people shop the perimeter because the perimeter is where all the more whole wholesome foods are rather than the ones up and down the aisle where that's where danger lurks. That's your danger zone. That's the minefields all over the place because everything in there is going to be all your processed, packaged, frozen dinners, refined foods, refined carbs, ca crackers, cookies, cakes, things like that. That's where all the bad stuff lurks. What's more, calorie restriction may help reduce excess body weight and belly fat, both of which 
are associated with shorter lifespans. And I've talked about that. Whenever you have more body weight, especially around your midsection, that is visceral fat. That means that fat is around your organs too. That's not the same as fat under your arms or fat on your thighs or butt. That visceral fat is the dangerous fat. Go back and watch a video I did on the dangers of belly fat where I talk about that. So if you start to just eat more wholesomely, eat more of the way God created foods, things with basically one ingredient, you're gonna be a whole lot better off. Now, number two is eat more plants. Yes, 95% of their food comes from plants or plant sources. So you wanna make sure you're getting plenty of vegetables. In their case, they're eating a lot of beans, greens, sweet potatoes, fruits, nuts, and seeds. That comprises the majority of what they're eating. Now, in America and many of the other countries of the world, we don't eat near as many plants as that. And as a result, but we don't get all the vital enzymes and nutrients and, and, and living foods. That's really what it comes down to. When you eat something that's plant-based, you're eating a living food, especially if you picked it fresh right out of your garden. It's still vibrant. You can actually measure the, the electricity coming out of that food and the higher the electricity. The, the frequencies, the more nutritious it is and the healthier it is. As food starts to die, it starts to go into a lower frequency. That's why well, you wonder why certain bugs, bacteria, locusts, maggots, things like that, why do they tend to go towards uh, damaged tissue? Because it has a lower frequency, a lower vibration, and when it does, it's now worm food, it's now bacteria food, it's now maggot food, and things like that. But the more vibrant and healthy it is, the more healthy it's gonna be for us. So you wanna eat plenty of plant-based. And for guys, you know, I'm all about the keto diet and how much I love it, but at the same time, you wanna make sure you're doing clean keto, eating a lot of plants, and making sure you're combining that with your healthy fats and healthy proteins to get the best benefit. Many studies link a plant-rich diet to lower risk of premature death, as well as a 29 to 52% reduced risk of cancer, metabolic syndrome, heart disease, depression, hormone-related diseases, and brain deterioration. That's right. You've got to get all of these types of nutrients in to produce the right hormones and right chemicals and right enzymes and right proteins to have your whole body functioning the way it's supposed to. And that comes from many times these plants. These effects are attributed to plant foods, nutrients, and antioxidants, which include polyphenols, carotenoids, folate, and vitamin C. That's right. They are rich, jam-packed with healthy food. So you want to make sure you're getting plenty of plants in your diet. Most people don't. You might get a serving a day, if that much. You might think, well, I'm eating something green because it looks like it's green and maybe it's a, it's a piece of candy or something or it's a, it's a jelly bean or something that's green. That's not the same thing, okay? Now, I don't mean to pick on you, but, but you want to make sure you eat plenty of greens. Number three, eat less red meat. Now, they don't eat much red meat. They might eat red meat a couple of times a week and it's typically about two ounces. Nobody in these countries eats a big 40 ounce porterhouse steak or a big 16 ounce steak. I, when I go out to dinner now and I go to a restaurant, I'll order the petite filet. I'll get the little six ounce one. I don't ever get nine ounces unless I just want to have it for the next day. And many times that's a, that's a pretty good deal or split it with your spouse. But nobody needs to be eating that much meat. Now even bodybuilders, you want to get about a gram of, of protein per pound of body weight, true, but still, nobody needs to be eating these enormous ribeye steaks or porterhouse steaks that are this thick. You can get away with a lot less. You want increased longevity? You really need a way to do it. The, the people in the blue zones are doing it. If they favor pasture-raised chicken and family-raised uh, pork, uh, even the meats. Now, that's very different. When I say pasture-raised chicken, very, very different, guys, than, than cage-free. Cage-free is not the same. Cage-free just basically means that there's a door on the other side of the building, it's open, maybe 15, 20 minutes a day, there's a small patch of grass, and if they wanna go over to it, they can go over to it, but good luck when they have to get past about 1,000 other chickens. So cage-free, farm-raised is not the same as pastured. So if you're looking to get as good a quality, look for pastured chicken, pastured grass-fed and grass-finished meat, and same thing when it comes to pork. Don't just assume it's that just simply because they say it's farm-raised or it's, it's cage-free. It doesn't mean the same. 
The meat people eat in blue zones comes from free roaming animals. That means the chickens are able to eat grubs and worms and grass and things like that. They're not eating their own feces or, or, or corn or soy, things like that. You know, you have to realize what you're eating is what the cows ate. You know, the cows ate soy and corn, all this GMO junk. You're eating that too. So if you can get a hold of a farmer near you, we have them near us in Georgia, where I can get a hold of a farmer who happens to raise the cattle, grass fed, grass finished, they're humanely treated. That's the best way to go. Buy a half a cow, buy a quarter of a cow, go in with someone else and do that. But also to, like I said, eat a little bit less red meat like the people in the blue zones do. They don't get hormones and pesticides, no antibiotics. You know, once again, they're giving these animals so many drugs, these commercially raised animals, just to kind of keep them alive long enough to get them to, to slaughter. That's really what it comes down to. Avoid processed meat like hot dogs, lunch meats, and sausages. Now, there are some that are decent. There's one that I get at Costco that's grass-fed, grass-finished. It's a, it's a good sausage. But many times what they're packing in a hot dog is, is basically what they would have thrown on the floor. It's just that, okay, we can grind this up and stick it in a, a casing and sell it as a hot dog. So just be aware of things like that. Eat more fish. Now, it's funny. I live in Georgia where it's all about Chick-fil-A. So the, the signs you always see on the side of the road are cows saying, eat more chicken. In other words, don't eat us, eat more chicken. Well, I'm saying eat more fish, less red meat. Poultry's okay, of course, but eat more fish. These regions of the world eat a lot more fish and they're small fish. They're not the big fish. So yes, it's not as big a problem when it comes to the mercury toxicity. They're eating mainly sardines. They're eating anchovies and things like that. But the Adventists did a study which was following 96,000 Americans since 2002. And they found that people who lived the longest were not necessarily vegans or meat eaters. No, they were something else. They were basically vegan fish eaters or pescatarians or pesco vegetarians. Very interesting. I like that. I like eating a lot of fish and a lot of vegetables. I think it's a great combination. Then you add some healthy oils to that like avocado oil or, or uh, olive oil and you've got a great, great combination. Lots of fish, lots of vegetables and you've got the best of both worlds. In other blue zones, diets consist of fish such as sardines, anchovies, and cod, and are a good common part of everyday meals, eaten on average two to three times per week. So they're not eating it in huge, huge quantities. It's not like they're having a big, huge piece of swordfish steak or something. They're having small amounts of fish. I love when I come home for lunch and I open up a can of sardines. And I'm getting the kind now that's got the skin and the bone still in it because I want all of that. Now, it doesn't have the scales. They descale it. But you can get the healthy kind where it's nice, you know, piece of sardine, and I'll just eat that with a little bit of uh, oil and vinegar, some celery, some onion, make a little salad out of it, or just eat it right out of the can. But eat more fish. Next is diminish or reduce your dairy, especially cow. Cow is really not what they're drinking in these parts of the world. It's mainly goat, goat milk or sheep milk, things like that. Not only that, the type of milk that they use in these regions of the world is type to casein milk. Now you can find that. I'm happy to say that I can go into any grocery store now and actually see A2 milk. In fact, they proudly display it right on the, on the box. But you want A2 milk if you're going to use cow's milk. A1 is really more genetically modified. It was more of a mutation that is hardier and produces more uh, milk. But at the same time, it's not really good for our bodies. See, milk has only been around about eight to 10,000 years. That's really all it's been. So our digestive systems, in the grand scheme of the world really are not uh, in tune to digesting this the way cows are. Cows are designed to grow 400 pounds or so a year, and they're not really you know, like us. We won't grow that big or that fast. So these molecules of proteins and, and uh, calories and fats really aren't designed for us. Most goat's milk in a Blue Zones diet is consumed not as a liquid, but as fermented products such as yogurt, sour milk, kefir, things like that. So a lot of these, you know, regions are not using the milk like we would, you know, in our coffee. They're fermenting it. Goats and sheep milk products, especially full fat, naturally fermented yogurt with no added sugars a few times weekly are okay in a blue zone diet. Goat and sheep's milk products do figure predominantly in traditional menus of both the Icarian and Sardinian blue zones. So the Greeks and the Italians are really using a lot of the goat and sheep's milk. 
Now, number six. Occasionally they have eggs. So I eat eggs a lot and that's okay because eggs are, eggs are good for you. They don't take out the yolks. They're eating the yolks. They're eating the full whole egg because they know that there's a lot of great omega-3 fats in the yolks. But here's the thing. They're not eating it as a main course. They're eating it more as a side dish, as an add-on is how they're doing it. Eggs are consumed in all five Blue Zone diets where people eat them on an average of two to four times a week. However, just like with meat, eggs are only consumed as a side dish, eaten alongside a larger portion of whole grain or other plant-based features, okay? So that's really how they're doing it. It's not like they're having this enormous omelet, although I, I don't have a problem with that because I do need more protein because I'm, I'm working out. And so for those of you who are, that's okay too. But for people in these blue zones where longevity is an issue, and really wanting to live longer, then they consume it on a less frequent basis. And it's not so much the main course. Eggs in the Blue Zone diets come from chickens that are range free. So they're moving around. They're, and when they say range free over there, they're range free. They're really outside walking around. They eat a wide variety of natural foods, they do not receive hormones and antibiotics and produce slowly matured eggs. Now over here in the States, we're giving chickens different hormones and antibiotics and things like that to get them to produce, to produce, to produce. And, and we're just killing these chickens over here. We're over there, the eggs are gonna be smaller, they're gonna be you know, grown slower. When you eat one of the eggs over there or eggs that you get from a farm, like I can get around where I live, you know, the yolk, you could always tell, it is orange, very, very vibrant orange. It's a lot more orange, whereas you get a, a, an egg from a supermarket, it's, it's pretty much anemic yellow. So you could always tell the difference. And they are naturally higher in omega-3 fatty acids because that's really what's in the yolk there. So the yolk, if you ask me, is the most important part of the egg. Number seven, they do eat a lot more beans. Now, I did a video on this where I was talking about the dangers of lectins now, but what is interesting about this? One of the things I talked about in those videos was the fact that many people are improperly cooking beans, whereas the ancient cultures, they knew exactly how to do it. In fact, you see this many times, patients that was having issues with eating beans and said, I never had these issues when I was home eating with my mom. My mom would cook dinner, never a problem. And the mom said, well, are you pressure cooking the beans? And she said, no, why would I do that? That's, that's the way the old people did it. And she goes, no, that's the way you're supposed to do it because when you do that, you cook out the lectins. So if you're gonna be consuming a lot more beans, which these populations do, make sure you're cooking them properly so that way you're reducing or removing the lectins, which may or may not be harmful to you, but someone else, it could really, really be harmful. So with the beans uh, in the blue zones, these represent an enormous part. It's almost like a superfood to their diets. On average, they make up about 21% of the protein, 77% of the complex carbohydrates, which obviously will deliver the sugar much slower into the system with more fiber, so that way it's a much slower release than the way we eat carbohydrates here. So you don't get the spike that we get with glucose and increased sugar into our systems. One five country study found that eating 20 grams of beans daily reduced a person's risk of dying in any given year by 8%. So once again, if done right, beans are a great addition. Now understand this, beans are not high, high protein. So a lot of times people are think they're eating it because it's high protein, it's not. As you can see, it's, it's really only about 21% protein and about 77% of it is carbohydrates. Now complex carbs, so that's good. It burns more slowly. But still, if you wanna add beans into your diet, great. Just be careful with it. Some of you may have reactions to it and you'll know it. You'll feel the bloating, you might feel the brain fog, you might feel slow and sluggish. If not, then add them in because they're a great, great source of protein, carbs, and fiber. Avoid added sugar. The blue zones, what they do is they have, like I said before, about the same amount of fruit as we eat. However, we add a lot more processed refined sugar. We add sugar into everything else. We're getting it from all the different cakes and pastries and breads and muffins and things like that. And by the way, I've said this before, many of you have heard it, you can't work off a bad diet. You, you cannot. You wanna lose weight, you wanna get into the shape of your life, you wanna get your waistline down where you want it, you can't work off the way you eat. So you might eat a muffin that might have a thousand calories, you're not gonna burn that off in the gym. There's no way, you won't burn that off in the whole week in the gym because every time you go there, if you're working out pretty intensely, you might burn 200 calories. 
So you have to get there five days a week to burn off those 200 or so calories, to burn off that one muffin. So think wisely about that. Think wisely about that bagel. You know, maybe just have it as a treat day or as a cheat day, but do not have it as the every day because if you do, you're going to pay the price for it. So we had a lot more sugar in between 1970 and 2000. The amount of sugar added to the body rose by 25%. Basically, get this, 22 teaspoons daily. That's enormous. 22 teaspoons daily. And a lot of these sugars are hidden. You don't even see it. Hidden sugars are mixed into salads, yogurts, muffins, and sauces. You don't even realize you're eating a salad dressing. It's got sugar in it. You're eating some kind of rib sauce. It's got a ton of sugar in it. Look at the ingredient list. And it's disguised as different names. You know, maltodextrin, sucralose, you know, fructose, high fructose corn syrup, all these different names. It's sugar, guys. It's sugar. Too much sugar has been shown to suppress your immune system, and we see that a lot. People with the weakest immune systems, the people who age the fastest, are the ones who have excess sugar in their diets. Diabetics age faster than anybody. You want to see or you want to monitor, and researchers do this, they look to, to see how populations age. They look at the diabetics because that's where the sugar is really affecting our bodies. It forms things called AGEs. Too much sugar has been shown to suppress the immune system, spikes insulin levels, diabetes, lowers fertility, obesity, and even shortens your lifespan. So you want to increase your lifespan, just start to reduce your sugars right away. That's going to be a huge addition right there alone. Now, with that, you can eat more nuts. So what do you eat during snacks? I eat macadamia nuts like crazy. I'm like so hooked on macadamia nuts right now. I just love them. But I, I love eating nuts when I get home. I'll have some, a handful of that. I'll have some pistachios and things like of that nature, and, and so, or some almonds, but right now I'm just on a macadamia nut kick. And I'll tell you, it's fantastic because it really takes the edge off. You're eating healthy quality fats, great oils, um, maybe a little bit of protein, but mainly it's just really good satiating quality fats. And you don't need much. You know, a quarter of a cup is about 230 calories, so you don't need very many, you know, maybe 15 or 20 in your hand. That's really all you need. Several studies show that nuts have beneficial effects on heart disease, high blood pressure, inflammation, diabetes, metabolic syndrome, belly fat levels, and even forms of cancer. A Harvard study followed 100,000 people for 30 years, and they found that nut eaters have a 20% lower mortality rate than non-nut eaters. So imagine that, just by adding nuts into your diet, adding nuts in for snacks, adding nuts in when maybe you get home and you're really not too hungry to make a dinner, but you want something, I joke because it's almost like a dessert for me. You know, mine have uh, sea salt on it and they're really crunchy. So it's almost like a, a little savory kind of dessert that I'll have some, uh, some macadamia nuts. Another study found that people who consumed at least three servings of nuts per week had a 39% lower risk of premature death. So guys, this is real. Just by adding nuts, and I'll tell you what, growing up as an, an Italian in New York, when after every time we had dinner or we had a family get together or something, there was always nuts on the table. There was always walnuts and pecans and, and filberts and, and pistachios and hazelnuts and things like that. There was always nuts. And there was always, you know, you maybe had some cake too, but there was always things like nuts that would really fill you up. And of course, it just adds to your longevity. Two recent studies, including over 350,000 people, noted that those who ate nuts had a 4 to 27% lower risk of dying during the study period, with the greatest reduction seen those who ate one serving of nuts per day. So like I said, I'm, I'm going to be really good. I'm probably going to live to about 120 because I have some when I come home for lunch and I have some when I come home for dinner. So anyway, increase nuts in your diet. Number 10. Well. Everybody's always asking, but do they have bread? I could tell you the bread in Europe and these other countries is a lot different than the bread we get here in the States. Now, taste, obviously, but also to the types of flours they're using. You know, one thing I notice is that my daughter, who, when she's here in the States, she has to be gluten-free. But when we were in Italy about two years ago, she had all the bread she wanted, and it was no problem at all. It was a different type of flour. Very, very different, but even at that, what they do in these other countries in the blue zones is that they ferment their bread. So in other words, they have sourdough bread because by doing that, the lactobacillus 
actually starts to eat up the sugar. It has a lower sugar concentration. It has a lower glycemic index. And overall, it's a lot better for you and it's a lot better for your digestion. Bread is a staple in the human diet for over 10,000 years. In three of the five blue zone diets, it is still a staple. Traditional blue zone breads are made with naturally occurring bacteria called lactobacilli, which digest the starches and glutens while making the bread rise. The process also creates an acid, the sour in the sourdough. The result is bread with less gluten than labeled gluten-free bread and about one thousandth of the amount of gluten in normal breads with a longer shelf life and a pleasantly sour taste that most people like. And like I said, it actually also has a lower glycemic index than uh, traditional breads. So if you're gonna have bread, and if you're on a keto diet, I don't recommend it, but you know what, you wanna have some from time to time to kinda not go crazy and wanna pull your hair out, like me, <laughs> just go ahead and have some sourdough bread and you're gonna be a whole lot better off. Next is consume whole foods. I talked about this earlier. When you shop the perimeter of the store, you're getting the whole food. You're getting the food the way God created it, okay? Not the ones up in the prepackaged aisles up in the middle of the store. That's where all the, 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 the danger lives, okay? That's not where you wanna be. So you wanna eat whole foods. That's really what it comes down to. Almost all the food consumed by centenarians in the Blue Zones diet, up to 90% grows within a 10 mile radius of their home. Food preparation is simple. They eat raw fruits, vegetables, they grind whole grains themselves, and then they cook them slowly. It's a process. Over here in the United States, I could tell you, everything's gotta be fast. We're trying to get it done and get it choked down as fast as we can. In these blue zones, they take the time. They take the time to grind things. They take the time to prepare things. They take the time to let things ferment. They take time. And in that time, they get to live life and love life but they're not in a rush all the time. I find that I do best, you know, when I'm not sitting there eating quickly at the counter, I sit down and prepare something to eat. Many times, if I'm in a rush, you guys can maybe relate to this too, you're eating it as you're cooking it. Okay, I got this done, let me eat that, and I'll start preparing this, let me eat that. And next thing you know, you don't even have it on a plate, you just ate it out of the pot as you were making it. I mean, that's crazy. But people in blue zones take the time to slow it all down, and prepare their foods as naturally, and they grow it right around their house. It's not grown and shipped from another country or somewhere else where they have to then inject it or, or spray it with gases to get it to look somewhat ripe. They're picking it ripe, okay? They're picking it ripe that day, and they don't shop for a week in advance. They'll shop for what they need each day, so that way they know they're getting the freshest ingredients, the best, not what they're gonna hold on to for the next week or week and a half and get around to it. No, no, they want it when it's picked at the most vibrant peak. They use fermentation, an ancient way to make nutrients bioavailable in the tofu, sourdough bread, wine, pickled vegetables they eat. I could tell you, I love eating things like kimchi. Kimchi is, is one of my favorite things and I love to eat it as almost like a side salad. But when you start to ferment things, you actually make it more bioavailable. That's when the vitamins are released. That's when the enzymes are released. That's when the bacteria can go to work helping you digest the foods the way you're supposed to. Eating whole foods, people living in the blue zones rarely ingest an artificial ingredient or preservative themselves. They just don't do it. They don't eat foods that are sprayed with chemicals that they know are gonna then need a, because they need a shelf life for a week or two. They're gonna eat that bread that day or the next day, and if it gets stale by the next day, they're gonna make a soup out of it, okay? Papa al pomodoro in Italy is an Italian tomato bread soup because they're not gonna let anything go to waste. So they're gonna take the tomatoes that are starting to go a little bit, and they're gonna take that bread, and they're gonna put it together with some sage and garlic and so on, and tomato base, and make a tomato soup out of it. They don't let it go to waste, okay? but everything is wholesome, everything is fresh, everything is picked that day, okay? Next, drink more coffee and tea. Yes, they drink a lot of more coffee and tea, especially Sardinia, especially Greece. Lots of coffee they drink over there. So drink more coffee and tea. There's amazing polyphenols and catechins found in green tea that may reduce your risk of cancer, diabetes, and heart disease. Similarly, coffee is linked to a low risk of type 2 diabetes, 
heart disease, certain cancers, and brain ailments, such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. I could tell you, I love drinking coffee probably more than I love drinking alcohol. I'll come home and I want a cup of coffee sometimes because I love the way it makes my brain feel sharp. So I drink a lot more coffee than I do really anything else, other than water, of course. I know you guys are worried about coffee. The research I've seen says you don't really get into trouble unless you're over five cups a day. So if you want to have a cup in the morning, cup in the afternoon, cup for dinner, just watch. I don't know how fast or slow you are of a metabolizer of the caffeine. So you might not be able to get to sleep at night. It might keep you up. Obviously, you know yourself. You know if you're going to be in that category or not. But also, too, coffee and tea drinkers benefit from a 20 to 30% lower risk of early death compared to non-drinkers. So I'm drinking my coffee. In fact, what I drink a lot of times right before I go to bed, or at least in the later part of the day, is that's where I might have my green tea. That's where I'll have green tea with coconut milk in it, put it in a blender, and I call it my matcha latte, okay? So that's what I have. So I'll have coffee morning, coffee afternoon, and typically green tea at night. And the one you've been waiting for, it's like, okay, Dr. Nick, when are you gonna get to the alcohol? When are you gonna get to the red wine? Well, it's a fact that most of these countries in the blue zones drink red wine. They drink some white, but it's really mainly red wine. Probably because of the dark red color, uh, there's a lot of resveratrol. So it's this super powerful antioxidant that we hear about all the time. And that's probably where the greatest benefits come from, the antioxidant powers of resveratrol. But not only that, a lot of times when you're drinking wine at night, like I had some last night, you calm down, the stress comes down, you get to relax a little bit. So people in the blue zones drink one to three glasses of red wine per day, often with a meal and with friends. Wine has actually been found to help the system absorb plant-based antioxidants. But not only that, the benefits may come from the resveratrol, an antioxidant specific to red wine, but also may be that little alcohol at the end of the day reduces stress, which is also good once again, for overall health. So guys, try these out, okay? You wanna live as long as the blue zone areas? Start to incorporate some of these tips. Incorporate all of them if you want, incorporate five of them. Maybe start to increase your plant-based diet. Maybe start to reduce the meats a little bit. Maybe start to eat more fish. Reduce the sugars, okay? All these different things. Now, like I said, this is part one of a two-part series. Watch for the next video where I'm gonna get into more tips of the lifestyles of the rich, I don't know, maybe rich on life, but definitely rich when it comes to their health and their longevity. So watch for the next video, and guys, I love and appreciate you, thanks for watching. Please share this video with other people because I know you know people that you would love to enrich, love to help, and love to help them live as long and as healthy as God created them to be. So anyway, guys, thanks so much. Don't go away, make sure you watch my other videos. If you like this one, you'll love those too. Anyways, this is Dr. Nick, have a blessed day. Bye-bye.